Today we're going to test some Faraday cages and make sure you watch to the end because we will be testing an aluminum foil Faraday cage. So it's a homemade version. So let's get started. So the way we're going to test these is we're going to put my cell phone inside and then we're going to call my cell phone with my wife's cell phone. So first, so a Faraday cage is a a metal box container it can be aluminum it can be steel some kind of container that's going to block the signal the cell signal um, any kind of frequency that's generated so this is a old chips container it's metal um, i believe it's aluminum so my phone just make sure that it is Make sure that it is working. So I'll call it with my wife's phone and it should ring. So you can hear it ringing. So I know it works. So technically I'm in a Faraday cage right now. So this is my trailer and with everything closed up and stuff, we don't get very good cell signal in here. So I've purchased a WeBoost antenna and I have that on the trailer so that it actually amplifies the signal from outside and broadcasts it inside. So now, inside my trailer, I actually get better signal than I do in my house. Or even standing outside. So uh, it'd be good to film inside of here. So I have full five bars of signal. I got 5G in here in the trailer. So I just showed that I have uh, enough signal to receive a phone call on my phone from my wife's phone. So I'm going to put it inside of the Faraday cage. So, and it's empty. Nothing else in it. So, what they say you want to do with the Faraday cage is you have to make sure it's completely closed so there's no holes in it and nothing else. They say that you don't want to have your phone touching anything that's conductive, which it is in here. So technically this is going to be worst case scenario. I do have a box that I could put it in. I got a Ziploc bag um, and I'll explain a few of these here in a minute. So with it completely closed, I'm going to again try to call. And what I'm going to try to demonstrate also is if I just leave the lid cracked open a little bit, what will it do? So right now it it's trying to call and it's being forwarded to voicemail. So it didn't get through. So I played with this the other day, trying to see how well this worked. And what I did is I left the lid off for a little bit. And we'll do the same thing. We'll see. So from my phone, it's not going from this phone to this one. So here it worked because I got this big hole here. So I have this big hole here. So let me close that hole up a bit, see if it still works. So the cell signal is not coming from this phone directly to my phone. It's actually going out to the antenna cell tower and then it's coming back. Now I hit the call button. So even with the little gap in there, it still picked up on it. And just one more time to show that it works. Calling again. But it's the cell signal broadcasting antenna that the, my phone has to pick up. And inside a container, the cell signal is trying to get in, it can't get in. If it opened a little bit, it still got in. It just went to call forwarding. So it went to go leave a message. So this is a, a cheap style of a uh, Faraday cage. You don't have to buy one. If you did buy one, you should test it in the same manner. Make sure you're somewhere where you have good cell signal and try to see if you can call it. If you can call it, then it's not a very good Faraday cage. So this one works. So we do freeze drying stuff. So with freeze drying, we have mylar bags. So mylar is like a mylar balloon. 
It's another type of material. Somebody said that these actually work. So I have my phone. So first I'm gonna see if I leave it open just a little bit. See if that actually picks up the signal. So it still picked it up. So now with the phone in there, and I'm gonna just fold it over. So you want to make sure that it's basically it has no hole. So if I was to just take it and tape it, it still could have a little bit of a gap because it's not completely folded over. So if I fold it over and then I tape it, there really isn't a hole. Even if anything that can come in here, there's only a small edge here and you have to get through that to come inside. So let's try this. I'm calling it and we'll see it looks like it's not going to answer wait till it tells me okay it's call forwarded to voicemail so it didn't take it so basically an EMP or whatever the Faraday cage is supposed to protect it's basically EMP protection so it's anything of a kind of a frequency that's trying to come in a cell signal is a frequency it's low power it's, it's not huge like if it was a lightning strike which is a form of an EMP uh, if a nuclear bomb was to go off that emits EMP uh, frequency and power um, or an EMP weapon would it emit a lot of power. So these may not be suitable for an EMP weapon, a nuclear bomb, or even a lightning strike. Um, depends on where it is and how much power was generated near your device. So it's better than nothing. Um, if lightning struck a mile away and it might go through the power lines and take something else out, if I had it in here, I'd probably be protected. Um, I got some phone calls that I gotta turn off. So, if I had it in this tin can and the lightning struck 20 feet away from it, there's probably so much power it's gonna go through that and it's still probably gonna get to my phone. So, same way with the Mylar bag, um, and then maybe the same thing with the tin foot. So, I'm gonna go over this next. But I also want to say there's an EMP shield that I have a discount code for and you can get $50 off per unit if you use my discount code, which is a really good, good deal. And those are actually tested to military standards um, to the best that they can, which is why they're the military standards they test to. They can't go out and take a weapon, an EMP weapon, and try to destroy the unit. So they test them to the way that the military has set up testings. Uh, they overachieve those tests. They test well beyond those criteria. But the EMP Shields, the name of the company, and I have my discount code in the description below. But as far as making homemade units, um, if you just don't want your phone to turn on or to receive a cell signal or whatever else you might you might put credit cards in something like this you know while you're shopping you want somebody to be able to scan your information so it was interesting this is a heavier duty metal container the mylar bag is a little bit thinner um, but it was interesting to see that that also worked aluminum foil was what I was most impressed with so all this is is a piece of 12 by 12 aluminum foil. I took it and I folded it in half. This one was bigger than the other one. I folded it in half. And then what I did, same way I rolled over the edge over there, I took this and I folded it in half right on the edge. Put a seam in it. And then I put tape on the edge. Do the same thing on the other side. 
put tape on the tape on the edge so it's got a good seam and then I'm gonna put my phone on the inside so that's what we're gonna do next so if you're gonna make any of these yourself you want to make sure I'm gonna call it with it open we'll call it again you want to make sure that the phone isn't in contact with the metal so you could use so it's open so it picked up on it so you could put the phone inside a ziploc bag stick it inside there they say the thicker the better so i actually have another option you could use one of these you could use you could use anything really but you could put your phone inside of here you could put the aluminum foil over this fold in half roll the edges over tape them so when you open it you have this to stick it into inside the aluminum foil i didn't make mine that big for demonstration but from what i hear a lot of people talking about uh, the corrugated cardboard is probably the best you don't want to stick your phone in the aluminum foil put a hole in the foil and then it'd be bad so you can take your phone stick it in this cardboard box i can stick it inside this metal tin I could probably stick my phone in this aluminum foil, stick that inside this box, put this box inside the metal tin. So now I have multiple layers. So everything is going to be better. Every additional layer that you do will be better. Again, this may not be the optimal way to do this if you're worried about a high powered EMP type of a uh, problem um, that you want to try to protect against so the MP shield has devices on the inside which actually absorb the power created not necessarily for your cell phone but it would be in your house uh, they have them for your vehicles they have them for solar systems um, they actually absorb the power that's created onto that system so whether it's your house or your your vehicle and then they're meant to, to burn up if something was to happen so um, you would use that device up it saves save you time and money but this is a good thing to do if you don't have the money to spend if you need to do something quick so now let's close this up so same thing like I said I'm going to take it and roll it over fold it in half I want to be extra cautious. I would probably make sure I tape it. So assuming we're not gonna, it's not gonna like move. So here I'm calling it. Looks like it's going to message. And it's forwarded. Call, call forward. It's forwarded to my voicemail. So it didn't accept the signal through there. So I probably would have even been better off if I had it inside of some cardboard. Um, I've heard a lot of people say when they do tin foil, aluminum foil, that they do multiple layers, which would be good. What I would suggest is to do your phone inside of a piece of cardboard, wrap the aluminum foil inside of another piece of cardboard, wrap that aluminum foil. You can actually wrap a large box in aluminum foil, put a bunch of phones and stuff in it, or a bunch of devices. Um, but I think a real good one is going to be, I can take this, put it inside of here, put this inside of this tin can, and then I should be protected. i already proven here that it's protected from just being able to receive cell signals. But if I'm worried about something a little bit more, a lightning storm, uh, an EMP device attack, uh, the more layers you do, the better. Uh, inside of a building, inside of a metal file cabinet, I have file, ca file cabinets here, inside this trailer, which is an aluminum enclosed trailer. In your basement would be another uh, good area. So put it inside these tin cans, put them in your basement. Uh, anything to minimize the amount of power that gets to them. The steel safe would be another good one. A microwave you could put it inside the microwave a microwave um, protects the radiation from coming out that's why you got all the little tiny holes in the in the front glass um, 
if that's specifically for a certain frequency. So there might be some EMPs that have a frequency that can get through, through those tiny holes. Um, so it was pretty cool that one single layer of aluminum foil was able to stop the signal from getting to my phone. So if you like more videos like this, subscribe to our channel up here. Watch more videos down here. Have a good day. Bye.